The fact that we might be shining new light on the birds and the bees and your favorite corn in the form of solar panels is a weird science effect that boggles my mind. Sorry guys, I wasn't pick me enough to pack my high-vis sweatshirt on vacation, so you're getting a more toned down version of me here. There's no secret that habitats are being negatively affected all around the world, both because of climate change and because of our unsustainable uses of land. As a result, native plants and animals and vegetation has been greatly reduced. Insect populations may be up to 75% over the last decade. Meanwhile, renewable energy like solar is one of the ways that we're using to try to tackle this problem and reduce the effects of climate change. But nothing is perfect and renewables come with their own issues and one of those issues is energy sprawl. Solar panels specifically take up a lot of space. They require a lot of surface area to soak up enough energy to meet our demands. And that contributes to the issues of unsustainable land usage. The gravel and turf grass that goes underneath most solar farms is contributing to the loss of biodiversity and native plants and insects. And if it's not displacing native grassland, then it's displacing farmland. And while the United States produces an excess amount of food currently, people rightfully have some concerns about food shortages in the future. But there's no such thing as a free lunch, and everything comes with a price, right? So these are just maybe some of the consequences and compromises we need to make to find some sort of sustainable balance between humanity and the environment. You know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Or can you? In fact, a solar farm in Ramsey, Minnesota is setting out to be Mary Antoinette and is going to maybe just let us eat that cake after all. They took the non-traditional route of planting native grasses and flowers underneath their solar panels and then just not mowing it. Now, not only is this reduced maintenance costs for them by not having to continually mow and groundskeep, but biodiversity has flourished on the solar farm. Local moth, honeybee, and butterfly populations have skyrocketed, and that's having incredibly positive effects, not just on the solar farm itself, but in the surrounding ecosystem. So positive that other solar farms are taking note and following suit. However, this approach is not without its challenges. It's more expensive to set up because the seeds can be expensive and difficult to find. And as demand for these kinds of solar farms grows, sourcing those seeds is gonna become a little bit more difficult until the infrastructure to supply them gets in place. But that really seems to be the only downside. And after that, it turns into a money-saving proposition for the people who run the solar farms. But as lovely as that is, native grasslands don't fix farmland food problems. Every time solar panels cover up an acre of cropland, that's one less acre growing crops for consumption. And now we have a lot of ways of addressing this. We have some really unsustainable forms of farming going on in our country and around the world right now. And we have some pretty unethical types of food consumption as societies. We could address some of those and really reduce the acreage we need to grow crops. But that would also mean we'd have to stop being selfish, profit-driven assholes and well, let's be real, that's that's not, not gonna happen. But what if I told you we might be able to indulge in another slice of that cake? Because it turns out you can legitimately farm the solar farm. By putting elevated solar panels in farm fields that are both tall enough to get a tractor underneath and wide enough to get a tractor between, there's nothing stopping you from farming both sun and sunflowers or corn or tomatoes or whatever the hell you want to farm. In fact, not only does dual purposing the land like this not inhibit farming or solar farming, it actually helps increase crop yields and decrease farming costs. Because while plants need sun to grow, too much sun can be a bad thing. It dries out soil, it can burn leaves. So while sun is good for making the crops grow, like everything, it's only good in moderation. And elevated solar panels provide just enough shade for that moderation. Without the sun beating down on it, the ground retains moisture better, which means less irrigation, which means less water waste and less cost to the farmers. That consistent moisture and a little bit of relief from peak sun actually makes the plants grow bigger and bigger plants mean more money per acre harvested but wait there's more if you order your solar panels now we'll throw in weather protection for free because elevated solar panels and fields help protect crops from hail and high winds which any farmer will tell you can be devastating to their fields these protections would help reduce crop insurance payments which would help bring down food prices and lower the amount of subsidies we need to give to farmers and once again it would increase yield not to mention it makes every farm field with these elevated solar panels a dual revenue source for farmers. And if we help smaller farmers put things like this in, that would make them more competitive with these major farms. And on top of that, it would help us fight climate change, help us with food security, and help us with energy independence. It's a win, 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 win. The fact that photovoltaic farming could help fix fading flora and fauna and make farmsteads more fiscally functional, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.